do it all the way. And that involves prayer. Don't don't give God your, your, your leftover minutes of the day for prayer. That's not the way to pray. You're supposed to give God the, the most energy that you have uh, of your day first. And He'll make sure that, that every the rest of the day will be energized for you. Pero muchos de nosotros no lo hacemos así. Por X razones. Pensamos nosotros que es una coincidencia. Some of us think that it's just coincidence that, well, I'm too tired, I, I didn't get up early in the morning. But let me tell you, there's, the devil is working behind all that to keep you from spending the best times that you can with the Lord. Y solo, when I pray, I like to be alone, people. I'm honest with you. I, I just don't, I just, I, you know, we need to pray together, pero yo a mí me gusta estar solo. I, I don't know, I'm just strange, I guess. But, but I like to take some time to be alone with the Lord. And um, last night, and John John and I went to, we went walking. He said, okay, have you got any words to tell me? Because after this, I'm gone. So, yeah, we exchanged a few words. No puse los headphones y vamos. It was just me and Jesus. And uh, I like to be alone. Sometimes you can't, pero... How many of you know the story of, of Susanna Wesley? You know who she was? Susanna Wesley was the mother of John, uh, Charles and John Wesley, the founders of the Methodist Church. John Wesley. How many of you know who John Wesley is? Very powerful man of God. Well, she had 11 children, and they were all running around the house. They didn't exactly have like 11 bedrooms, you know, back in those days. But she trained those kids, listen, she trained those kids that when she, cuando se aventaba el, el apron over her head, they would not even get close to her because they were going to get it. That was her devotional time. She found a way to be with God. And all of us can find a way to be with the Lord. Don't matter, there's no excuse. No, because I have to make the baby and y que esto y que lo otro y que I got so many things that I need to get done. You know, make a study of the, of the men uh, from way back when, like George Washington, you know, those people. The more work they had, the earlier they got up to spend more time with God. Entre más trabajo tienes, es más razón por qué orar más y por qué levantarte aún más temprano. I don't know if you want to do it at night or, or whenever, but you need to do it. You need to concentrate and put your all into prayer. Don't, don't just do it as an extracurricular activity. A ver si hay chance, you know, orar, si no, you know, no. Look at what Jeremiah 29, 13 says. If you want to find God, you got to seek Him with all your heart. How many of us say, well, God didn't answer the prayer, you know, we've been praying and it's just, breakthrough. Maybe that's because we haven't given our all to the Lord. It says here in Jeremiah 29, 13, And you shall seek me and find me. When? When you shall search for me with all of your heart. Amen. Not just un poquito, con todo. Con todo el corazón. So it's important for us to put our all into prayer. And we need to pray earnestly. In James chapter uh, 5 and verse 17. I know some of you, yo, yo creo que aquí most, I'm going to say at least 30% of this congregation here has had a, a time and point in their life when you remember a certain prayer that you did because you were in such agony. You were in a, in a great crisis. Y esa oración, you prayed so many times. Y muchas veces que has orado, te has olvidado esa oración, pero esta oración nunca se te olvidó. You prayed. You remember exactly where the spot was when you were praying. You remember the, what corner of the bed it was, if it was in a, by the bed. Or, ¿dónde estabas cuando oraste? Y, y hasta te puedes recordar de lo que sentías cuando oraste ese momento. Those are called earnest prayers. This is the way we need to pray, is to pray earnestly. With everything that we have inside of us. I remember one time when God called me to ministry. And I knelt beside that creepy floor in Temple, Texas, in an old house built in the early 1900s. Full of cockroaches, man, they were so big, but it's on skateboards. 
he could get a free ride to the bathroom at night. Con dos. The rats were like rabbits. But I, I, I remember that that night, I, God called me to full-time ministry. That's scary, brother. It's scary to, to get into a situation where you don't have a job and you're going to depend totally on the Lord. Now, some of you are probably thinking, nah, that's easy. Look at you. No. You guys weren't there in 1991 when we started. There was no church. There was no nothing, no building, no people. You didn't even know who I was. Some of you didn't. And I remember that God was pulling me. He was tugging me. He said, come on, I'm calling you. This is your time. Deja todo y sigue him. Just like Jesus told his disciples to leave everything and follow him. You either have to be called and obedient or crazy to do that. I think I was a little both. So I remember that I just kept on. I'm going to quit the job. I'm going to just do full-time ministry. Now, bear in mind, brother, I didn't have a list of people that said, Oh, brother, if you ever go on full-time ministry, cuenta conmigo. Yo te mandar a hundred a month, yo que cincuenta, y que este lo otro. I didn't know nobody. I didn't have pastor, a list of pastors. Says, you come preach in my church, I'll give you an offering. Nah, this, it was like zero. It's crazy the way God calls you sometimes. And I, and I told Diana, you know how women are? Remember those electronic circuits? Huh? <laughs> and she said, and she said, you know, I agree. But maybe you should get like a part-time job, <laughs> like at Walmart or something. You know, I had, I, God had already dealt me on me, my deal with the Lord. All I had to do was was get beyond la patrona. And uh, and I said, you know what? No, never mind. This is not of God. If I have to work for man, then God can call me. I said, either I'm going to depend totally on the Lord or not at all. God didn't call me. If God called me, He was supply. No sé cómo estuvo, que we both agree. But I remember that I, I knelt down by the bed and I prayed this prayer. This is a prayer that I never forget. Very simple prayer. But it was an earnest prayer that I prayed. My heart was pure. Everything was in it. And I was ready to give my all to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I have three children. Back then we only had three. David was a baby. And I said, you know that I can't survive without finances. That's all I told God. And God spoke to me back. And he said, if you work for me, I will pay. And that's all he said. Yeah, he says, that's prayer. Very short prayer, but very earnest prayer. And that prayer has not left me. That was 1991. Well, how many years has that been? 16, 17 years? Somebody figured out. 18 years ago, God called me. And you know what? It's true. God is real. But I asked my wife how many times I've had to go look for a job. Don't tell me. Not one time. I asked her how many times I've gone to somebody to lend us money. Not one time. I asked her how many times I've tried to give somebody a hint that we're in financial need. Never. Because that earnest prayer that I said that evening is still with me today. And God has never left us nor forsaken us. That's why I teach about planting seeds. Because I can prove it to you with my own life. God has never left us. But when you pray earnestly, and there's other instances that you can remember yourself that you have prayed an earnest prayer. Sometimes I've received some news of people that are sick or dying or whatever. And, and I've, I've gone... I've gone to the bedroom and I've knelt down and I've prayed. Yes, a prayer. There was something about that prayer that I just felt all of all of heaven's grace over that prayer, and God healed the person. God came through, but that prayer was an earnest prayer. Going.